Okay, so what we have here is a homopole generator. Homo meaning the same pole. So it uses the same exact um, magnetic pole in order to generate um, in order to generate a force on the electrons that are moving through the copper wire or the current that is given by the battery. The battery or the Duracell battery unit provides an EMF to the copper wire. So the copper so the electrons travel through the copper wire. In, an, in a single um, magnetic field, and that generates um, and that force on the electrons. It's hard for me to, to, to get it going. It's really hard to bend this copper wire since, since, since it's so thin and malleable that it's taken me a while to get it to this exact configuration. But the concept's the same. The idea is, is that, see, it spins. So the idea is, is that, um, as explained in this diagram, what we have here is a set of magnets. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You also learn in physics that um, that magnets are always um, dipolar. It doesn't matter how many times you cut a magnet. Cutting a magnet will just separate into two smaller magnets that are the same pole, and that are the same um, yeah polar configuration from south to north or north to south or whatever. It doesn't really matter in this situation. But what we have is is a set of batteries. At the bottom of this, um, at, the, at the bottom of this um, battery that I have basically just connected to the battery, it just sticks on because it's magnetic, and you know the battery's made of metal. And so, the batteries generate magnetic field um, lines that are similar in, in this fashion. I mean, you learn that um, magnetic field lines are generated um, radially outwards from north towards south. And so, this is the this is the unipolar generator, or this is the single magnetic. Um, magnetic field pole. We're going to assume that the top set, the top of the set of um, magnets is north, and the bottom will be south. And so these magnetic field lines are created by this set of batteries right here. And here is the battery that's mounted on top. This is the copper wire. I mean, mine is all swirled and twisted around, but I just do that for the sake of like artistic license and because I don't have that much space. Even though it's hard for me to, it's hard for, it's hard for me to bend the wire in a way that 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 makes it easy to fit on top of the on top of the battery, let alone the little like the little like um, stud at the top of the positive terminal of the battery. But anyway, so what happens is is a current that is driven by the EMF of the ba of the battery source, the Duracell battery, and so um, the current travels through in this direction from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. And so if we take one small segment and we look at one small bit of that wire and we blow it into proportion, we can see that there are electrons that are traveling up. Well, because the convention is, is that electrons are of negative charge, but current denotes positive charge moving. And so when negative, um, when negative charged electrons are, are moving, um, they're actually moving in the opposite direction of the current itself because electrons moving in a direction denotes negative negative current but we don't but 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 positive current I denotes positive charge and so in actuality yeah that that's how that's how the convention works. So in actuality the electrons are actually moving up the wire, up this segment right here, but we're just gonna denote that as positive charge or we're gonna basically equivalent equivalent that to positive charge positive charge moving down this way. And so if we look at this segment right here, sorry it's hard for me to it's hard for me to, to like to like point things out um, um, on, on, a, on a mirror image or whatever. So if we look at this electron right here, um, it's going up, but we're going to assume that it's positive charge going down. And so if you use your right hand rule and you see that, that at that exact point right there, we're just going to assume that the magnetic field line um, is, is like almost, almost perpendicular to, to, the, to the copper wire at that point. Okay? So the magnetic field line um, radiates out from, from the source, from the magnet, in this ovular direction on this side of the magnet. And so it, um, it, it translates into a, into a horizontal magnetic field line B right over here. See that? So let me point that out, okay? And so if you use your, if you use your, like, your right hand rule, or like this, I don't know, you learn this too. Um, so basically the vector, the B, the B line vector is perpendicular to the um, the velocity we're going to denote this this right here this blue vector as the velocity of positive charge moving I mean there's no actual positive charge 
But when electrons which are of negative charge are moving up, that's equivalent of positive charges moving down, okay? And so we're going to denote this as positive charges moving down. And then the force that's generated is, um, is, the, is the cross product of this B vector and this um, positive um, charge velocity vector, which is that, which is that, which is into the page. Well, I mean, like, I can't really draw it very well, but, but that, that force is actually into the page. I mean, if I wanted to, I would just draw it as an X, kind of like the bottom of the feathers of an arrow, okay? But yeah, and so a net force is is applied to the electron that's into the page, and so that's why the um, that's why the wire rotates into the page and creates a net moment like that. The vector um, of the moment would be in the positive k, I believe, and that would be out of the page, but that's not the point. I mean. Or the, no, no, it would it would be it would be in, in the y, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, it, using using this coordinate axis, it would be it would be in the positive j direction. So yeah, the 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 moment the moment vector would be like up, and so it would be wrapping around like that. Um, that that is generated by the fact that because the electrons have force exerted onto them, and the force is translated into the material in which the electrons pass through, which in this case is the copper wire. Um, there is a net force applied to the copper wire on all these infinitesimally small segments because there are electrons that are that are that are um, that are passing through them that are having a force applied to them. So overall, the accumulated force causes the copper wire to rotate like that. Okay, and that's what creates a spinning motion of um, of this one pole generator. I don't know. It's hard for me. It's hard for me to get set up like this, but you saw it at the beginning. I mean, it's really annoying. The, my copper wire is really hard to turn. It's really delicate. It's really hard. But let's see if I can start it again. Sorry. It took me a while to get this. Yeah, see, there, there it spins. And so that is a homopolar generator. Thank you.